good morning students in the previous video session you have uh, completed the comparison between translational motion and the rotational motion it is one of the important uh, question we have to learn so today we are going to have a new topic that is rolling motion you know in our daily life we came across many rolling motions You know that when you are moving in a bus, when you are moving in a car, when you are moving in a bike, its wheel rolls. So this wheel possesses what a rolling motion. So like that, uh, not only this wheel, suppose you are choosing at this kind, throwing it, you can see what a rolling motion. So in our daily life, what a we came across this rolling motion. Now let us consider on the object. Okay, on the disc you can consider like this. Consider on this. And uh, assume that on this is there, and uh, this is the center of mass. Here the center of mass. Now <coughs> you can choose a point P in any place. When you are choosing a point P, when you are choosing a point P, listen here. We are choosing a point P on this disc. What happened means this P translational motion. This is translational motion. This P is translational motion is. Rotate along with this center of mass, and this rotational motion it rotate up with respect to this center of mass. So two things you have to remember: what this key is there, you are choosing a point P, any place you choose, you can choose here also. Yes, what else? Translational motion is always along with this center of mass, and the rotational motion. And the rotational motion, what will happen? Rotational motion with respect to the center of mass. So there is what a about a rolling motion. Remember these two points here. That's all. Just a we are choosing a point. Any point we can choose from a disc. So all the point in the disc, its translational motion is always along with the center of mass, and its rotational motion. What will happen? With respect to this center of mass, it will rotate. <coughs> Wherever you choose the point, now it rotate with respect to the center of mass. Next one is about the combination of translational and rotational motion. Combination, combination of translational <coughs> and rotational motion. Rotational motion. So as uh, we have. That uh, we have told that uh, this translational motion and the rotational motion is included in the rolling motion. Let us see how this translational motion and rotational motion is included in rolling. Let us see how it is happening. You see, assume that uh, you have a an object uh, of radius. Uh, Like this on the object, uh, its radius is r. Uh, radius is what r? Uh, r. Uh. So its radius is r means in one full rotation. In one full rotation, what will happen? One full rotation. Its circumference is what r? Two pi r. Uh, its circumference is two pi r. Uh. So For one full rotation, this two pi r is what are displaced. 
2 pi r means what is circumference of a circle. So, for one full rotation, what will happen means its center of mass also displaced. You see, this is a center of mass. We can consider. We can keep it as this is a center of mass. This center of mass also displaced to what now? This 2 pi r x. Understand that? So if you are taking, if you are choosing a circle of radius r, its circumference is 2 pi r. So for one full rotation, one full rotation, what will happen? Its center of mass also displaced 2 pi r times. Like that, uh, any point you choose here, any point you choose here, all these point, uh, all these point, what are? Uh, is placed uh, two pi r times. Now, let us see. You see, the center of mass moves only in straight line path. Now, it is in this position. Assume that now the radius changed. Radius is changed in some other position. Still, this center of mass moves in straight line path. Radius moves another position. So for one full rotation, here in this we are just showing what are the full rotation. So during this full rotation, center of mass is center of mass is what are moving in straight line. It shows that the center of mass always moves in straight line path. So the center of mass moves in straight line path means this center of mass is having what are is moving in translation direction. So that is what here center of mass takes straight line path so it possesses what are translational motion. All other point in this circle you see this point now this point of process two motion one is along with the center of mass that is what are we translational motion another one is what are with respect to this this will turn so we rotational vector v rotational so any point you choose any point you choose one is what are Along with that is what first we have seen in during rolling motion, during rolling motion, what are <coughs> translational motion is along with the center of mass and rotational motion is rotational motion with respect to the center of mass. So that's what we have seen. This any point you choose, its translational motion is what are one point of one. Its center of mass is moves in straight line path, so it possesses what a translation of motion. But all other points in this have what a two types of motion. That is what a translational motion and a rotational motion. So here you can write based on this V C M is equal to V translational translation. It means what a center of mass. Or always moves in straight line path, so it possesses what are translation and motion. Remaining the point in these edges, it moves like cycloid, like a cycloid. This is a movement of this is a motion which shows the point at the edges. So remember this point now. This is what here we are studying about the combination of translational and rotational motion. If you are choosing a circle or if you are choosing an object which moves. So, so there will be what the center of mass always moves in straight line path. So it possesses translational motion. All other point in this object moves in two directions. What are translational motion as well as rotational motion then what are the point at the edges moves in cyclone path cyclone 
cycloid path. So here it is given some diagram. We can go through that now. So <coughs> now what you have to see means VCM is equal to V translational. It means the center of mass only moves in translational path. All the other point which moves into path translational and the rotation. And the, what happened means suppose this is the disk. No? This is the center of mass. This is the center of mass. Here you are choosing a point. No? This is VCM. Here you are choosing a point. No? V rotational. One is rotational motion and another one is what are V translational motion. It has some resultant velocity. It has some resultant velocity. This resultant velocity, this is what? It has some resultant velocity. This resultant velocity is always perpendicular to the point of contact from center of mass. You see, this resultant, this is a point of contact now. And from here, this resultant velocity is always perpendicular to this is V rotation translation. Always perpendicular to the point of contact. So remember, whenever a body, an object which is in pure rolling motion, its point of contact, its point of contact possesses two motion. What are rotational motion and the translational motion? Its resultant velocity. This is a resultant velocity. This resultant velocity is always perpendicular to the point of contact based on its center of mass. This is the center of mass. From this center of mass, the point of contact resultant velocity is perpendicular. You see, perpendicular, 90 degree. This one. This resultant velocity is 90 degree to this point of center of mass. From the point of Contact. You can choose any point of contact on always this resultant velocity is 90 degree to the center of mass from its point of contact. So you can write uh, before also I told uh, the center of mass is what uh, moving straight line path. So V C M equal to V translational you can write uh, and V rotational is equal to r omega you can write. Because this r omega means what? R? <coughs> because at the point of contact it possesses two motion v rotational and the v translational. The v rotational formula is what? R? r omega angular velocity. Omega means angular velocity and r means what? The distance. Now you see during finally, now we are going to the conclusion part of finally how we can conclude this. That's what now finally we can conclude this. You see, when this moves, when this moves from this point of contact of two motion, the rotational and the V translational, the magnitude of this V translational and V rotational is always equal. So V translational is equal to V rotational. The magnitude, the size of, the value of these two translational motion and the rotational motion is same. So you can write V translational is equal to V Rotational as already you know, V translational is equal to what all? center of mass. So is equal to you can write center of mass. So V C M is equal to V rotation. Also you can write down. So 
what are we rotation means r omega so vcm is equal to r omega this is what are the final thing this is our calculus so remember that uh, okay nothing just you can go through this it's not a uh, so not a uh, order very very important uh, but you can just go through this because some only questions i know they can from this part so you see this is what a uh, you can consider on the uh, circle from this if you are choosing a point uh, that point uh, moves what a uh, two direction translation and uh, rotation uh, and the center of mass moves in straight line path so it possesses only translation almost so you can write down uh, vcm is equal to p translational then here this diagram shows how it moves the point of contact uh, finally this is what are uh, Uh, from the point of contact uh, moves two direction we translational we rotational and the center of mass one direction and the resultant of these two is what are v we can tell always this v is uh, so this resultant v is what are a particular to the center of mass based on this point of contact so from that we can conclude this thing uh, what are We translational is equal to center of mass. It means what are? Then you can tell that uh, we translational is equal to we rotational. Why? Because the magnitude is always same. So we rotational is r omega. We translational is v c m. So all is same. So v c m is equal to you can write what are r omega. so based on these two cases also there the combination of translational and rotational motion about the center of mass and uh, the momentary rotational motion is about the point of contact based on these two cases also given you can go through page number 251 this combination of translational motion page number 251 and the 253 just to go through that uh, Next one is about the uh, slipping and the sliding. Slipping and the sliding. Slipping and the sliding. You know that the uh, slipping and the sliding both are happening. Both are happening when we what are? So when we apply the sudden brake, maybe the vehicle will accelerate or decelerate. You know we have the experience of many times we are traveling in the car or the bus or something. Many times we have the experience of applying the sudden brake. So sudden brake applying time, you know this. Sometimes, so uh, assume that uh, you are moving in a road uh, where the road is very slippery. When you are moving on a slippery road, uh, opposite road vehicle is coming. Suddenly your driver applied brake. What will happen to your vehicle? What will happen? so what you can see is when this person applying sudden brake on a slippery road uh, you can see that uh, you are you are it will you can hear a sound and you can see your tire will slip and move further sometimes accident also okay if it is a slippery road applying the sudden brake uh, maybe the vehicle will not stop and it will go and hit on other vehicle why it is happening it is what here we are going to see so during this slipping time this v translational is greater than v rotational motion this is for the this is a reason this is a main reason v translational is greater than v 
protection. Or you can tell we see a being greater than our mind. So listen here, this is the uh, I here the point of contact with the surface. This point of contact now uh, possess two motion. What are translational and uh, rotation? We rotational we translation. And what happened to means when you apply the brake on this slippery road, uh, this V translation is getting greater than this V rotation. So there is a resultant velocity There is a resultant velocity which is in the forward direction. So there is a resultant velocity in the forward direction that's what on this sliding is happening. So what happened means then you can see after some time what on it will slide and the stops again this pure rolling is happening. So how it is happening means this direction there is a resultant velocity so to manage this opposite to this there is a frictional force coefficient of friction. Opposite to this translational motion, there is a frictional force. This frictional force is applied. This frictional force is increasing until this translational motion and the rotational motion becomes same. So this is a concept of this is a concept of under this rotational motion and the translational motion becomes same once these two magnitude is same this vehicle is on under pure rolling so this is what we are saying slide understand that so during sliding translational motion is greater than what of rotational motion so mostly this sliding is happening when the vehicle which moves on a slippery road so why it is happening why it is happening when this vehicle is entering the slippery road uh, while applying this sudden break this translational motion is increasing this translational motion is increasing increased than this water rotational motion so there is a resultant velocity this resultant velocity is the reason why this water sliding happens so to manage this what is the frictional force this frictional force opposes this translational motion and once this translational motion and the rotational motion becomes same what all? Until that frictional force will increase, then these two become same, then it will <coughs> provide normal pure. Slipping, next one is what all? Slipping. Slipping, this is sliding. This slipping time, V rotational is greater than V translation. Slipping time water. Rotational motion is greater than translational. Also the same thing. Assume that uh, you are moving in a vehicle on a muddy road. Sometimes we have the experience while traveling on a muddy road. Uh, if sudden black applied, uh, you can see that the uh, tire rolled up. So that time it's rotational. This rotational V rotational motion is greater than what all? Translational motion. So here V rotational this direction V this is a point of contact V translational V rotational and from this point of contact this rotational motion is increasing. 
rational motion increasing means its velocity. Here there is a resultant velocity. Here there is a resultant velocity. Now who will be there? Yeah, frictional force which is opposite to this. This frictional force will increase until what are these two translational and rotational motion is same and uh, it set up what uh, pure rolling. So this we can tell backward slipping, this we can tell forward slipping. That is also another name of sliding forward slipping. This one we can tell backward slipping. So this is what we can see in our regular regular life when we moves on vehicle. We have the experience of travelling in slippery road and the muddy road. When you are travelling on slippery road, if sudden break applied, what is occurring? Sliding. What is the reason? Translational is greater than what or rotational motion. So to manage this, what is be there? Frictional force. Frictional force opposes this translational motion direction and the increase. Then this two will be equal, it sets up pure rolling. This we can tell what are slipping, what are forward slipping. The same thing here opposite of rotation will be greater. Travelling on a body road of sudden break up plane. So here what is happening? Rotation is greater than translational motion. So here resultant velocity is this direction so what opposes to oppose this there will be frictional force which is opposite to this resultant of velocity and here it sets up what a pure rolling this is what we are saying backward or backward slipping next there is a derivation kinetic energy in pure rolling we can find out the equation for kinetic of energy so Kinetic energy in pure rolling. You all know there is a kinetic energy formula. Kinetic energy translational motion half. Kinetic energy formula is what the half of v square for translational motion half m m. V square. Translation of motion means what the base load is center of mass and the rotational motion is equal to half what the instead of I senium omega square. <coughs> so omega means for the angular velocity this is what kinetic energy rotational formula and the translational formula the total kinetic energy how you can find out kinetic energy translational plus kinetic energy rotational so half m v square plus half I omega square. This we can keep it as equation 1. Now we know that moment of inertia I formula I is equal to what M k square. So I is equal to M k square. That is a moment of inertia formula. It is of variation. You have gone through that session. And the omega formula we can find out from V is equal to R omega. V is equal to R omega. So omega is equal to what will come? V C M by R. So omega square is equal to V square by R square. Okay. Capital R we can use. So R. Capital R only. So, R square. 
Now substitute this I value and the omega value in equation 1. Substitute ICM and the omega square value in equation 1. Okay. Now I am substituting these two, what will come? Kinetic energy is equal to half m v square c m plus half instead of y c m because we are finding these four with the center of masses reference point. Okay. We have chosen this because we are choosing center of mass as reference point. Center of mass as reference point, that's what the center of mass I choose. What are <coughs> mk square, moment of inertia formula. That's what we are finding. Now half mv square cm plus instead of I cm m k square into omega square means v square by r square. Now you see here half half m m v square v square. This term is common for all. So take all this outside half common m common v square common half of v square common so remaining here what are only one plus here what is remaining half taken m taken remaining is v square taken remaining is k square by r square this is this is the equation we got now this is a kinetic energy equation we got what a center of mass as a reference point. Now you can choose point of contact as reference point. So you can choose the formula kinetic energy is equal to half I0 omega square. Half I0 omega square, I0 means what a moment of inertia, you have learned already. Uh, parallel axis theorem. So by from parallel axis theorem, I C O is equal to what? I C M plus M R square. M R square. Parallel axis theorem. I C M means what? I C O means I C M plus M R square. I C M means what? M K square. So substitute this ICM value in this equation. So I0 is equal to M K square plus M R square. So now what you have to do means here omega is there. This you can keep equation 2. Okay. Now find out omega square. We know that now VCM is equal to R omega the same thing. So omega is equal to VCM by R. Omega square means omega square means what? V square by R square. So substitute this I0 value and omega square value in equation 1. Equation 2. Substitute I0 value and the omega square in equation 2. So what will get a kinetic energy is equal to half into m k square plus m r square into omega square value v square c m by r square. Now this v square is common for these two terms, so multiply inside. Huh? So kinetic energy is equal to half what are m k square v square cm by 
R square plus half m R square V square cm by this half is common for all, V square is common for all. So we have it like this R square R square cancel. Now take all the common term outside now. While taking all the common term outside, what will come? Half is common, M is common, V square is common. Remaining inside what are? K square by R square plus here R square R square cancel. Half M V square taken outside remaining one. Rearrange that right now. And the energy is equal to half M V square 1 plus K square by R square. So you see these two equation. This two equation you see. Here we can keep two. This will keep three. Here you put the order 3 and here 2. Now when you are comparing this equation 2 and 4, you can conclude that two case. What are the combination of translational motion and rotational motion is about the center of mass and the momentary motion is about the point of contact. This is what our important uh, question in this unit. Uh, you can see in page number 255, kinetic energy in pure rolling. Just you have to write kinetic energy in translational motion and then in rotational motion, then add the two, take the common term outside, or you will get an equation like this. ICM value, VCM, you can find out of this map. The same way, you can choose what are. Here we have taken the center of mass as reference point, and here we have taken the Point of contact as reference point, we will get the same equation and we can give that conclusion. And now, uh, my dear students, today we have gone through the sliding, slipping, and uh, <coughs> the combination of translational motion, rotational motion, rolling motion, and the kinetic energy in pure rolling. In, from this today's session, you have to practice this derivation, it is one of the important derivation. And the definition for sliding and slipping, it is also very very important uh, three mark question. So you have to learn, you have to practice this. Bye bye. See you all. Thank you.